Hey guys, Michael from Concrete Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to identify the types of matter, how to determine if the matter is a element, a compound, a homogeneous mixture, or a heterogeneous mixture. Well, let's start by looking at this chart right here. So matter is just anything that has both volume and mass. So something that takes up space and weighs a certain amount. And then, so matter can be broken down into two broad categories. You can have a pure substance or you can have a mixture. A pure substance is just uh, it's, it's made up of a single type of, of matter. So that could be made up of single type element or a single type of compound. So you have a pure substance that's just an element or a compound. Element, as the name suggests, is just a single type of element. So it could be like sodium, hydrogen, oxygen, so just a single type of element. And then compound is when you have, uh, it's, it's compound is made up of two or more elements, such as like carbon dioxide, which is C, and then oxygen, so two compounds, or two elements making a compound. So those are pure substances when you just have one type of matter. Then the other category is a mixture. A mixture can be broken down into two categories. These can be homogeneous mixture or homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. So homogeneous mixtures, they, uh, they are they have the same appearance throughout and they look like they're uniform throughout. So it just looks like it's, it's the parts are indis indistinguishable, essentially. It's just the entire sample looks the same. Heterogeneous mixture, on the other hand, they have pretty distinct parts. Uh, for example, if you had such as oil or and water, so you have a solution of oil and water, then you'll have oil on the top and then water on the bottom, and that would be a heterogeneous mixture. It's a mixture because you have two, two substances, but it's heterogeneous because there's a very clear distinction where uh, where the oil is and where the water is. So homogeneous just think it looks the same throughout. Or if you uh, want uh, an, another way to think about, think if you were to grab with one hand full pull into, use one hand to pull, grab the sample, use the other hand to grab a sample, and then if the sample looks similar in both hands, then that's going to be homogeneous. But if the samples look different, then that's going to be heterogeneous. Don't worry, it'll, it'll make a lot more sense as we go through these examples, and so you'll get a clearer picture. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is that pure substances, they have fixed properties. So for example, uh, water will always have a certain melting point, a certain boiling point, it won't change. Whereas a mixture will have varying properties. The, so if you had, say, salt water, the melting point and the boiling point can change depending on how much salt and how much water you have. So pure substances, they have fixed properties, whereas mixtures, they can be separated and they have varying properties. All right, now let's take a look at this example. So this example asks, or these questions, asks us to classify the following matter as either an element, a compound, a homogeneous mixture, or a heterogeneous mixture. Whoops, that should be heterogeneous. So first one, we have crushed ice. Uh, crushed, crushed ice is just Ice is just water, so we ju we just have water in in the solid form, and it's just water, so that means it's going to be a pure substance. And since it's made up of two elements, it, it's going to be a compound. Next one, seawater. So think if we uh, went into ocean and scooped up a cup of water, and then if you were to look at it, it just looks cloudy throughout. So it looks like it's the same throughout. So that's going to be a homogeneous mixture, but you can argue, a lot of these, with, with these mixtures, you can argue it could be homogeneous or heterogeneous. On the other hand, you can argue that seawater could be heterogeneous, because then if you took two cups and then you scooped up a sample of seawater, maybe in, in one of the cups you might get some seaweed, and in the other cup you might not. So it could also be a heterogeneous mixture, depending on how you argue. Next one, pizza. Pizza, for sure, it's going to be a heterogeneous mixture. Uh, just because a pizza have a lot of ingredients, it has cheese, it can have pepperoni, it can have sausage, but then if I were to get a slice of pizza and you were to get a slice of pizza, the amount of ingredients we get in our slices would be different. So that would be a heterogeneous mixture just because it has varying composition. Next one, aluminum. We just have one uh, one thing, so this is going to be a pure substance, and it's just aluminum. Aluminum is a single element, so this is just going to be an element. Next one, air. Air, the air we breathe is made up of multiple gases such as oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, but it's the same composition throughout. If you, we can't really see air, but the air is really well mixed. You don't have just oxygen in one section and then nitrogen and carbon dioxide in different, different sections. So since this is uniform throughout and is well mixed, this is going to be a homogeneous mixture. 
Next one, sugar. Sugar's formula is C6, or one form of sugar is glucose C6H12O6, and that is going to be a compound because it's made up of multiple type, uh, it's, it's a compound made up of multiple elements, but it's going to be a pure substance because we just have this one compound. We don't have multiple compounds together. So this right here is going to be a pure compound. Um, next one, steel. Steel is a combination of multiple elements, but if you were to just look at a piece of steel, it looks the same throughout, so this would make it a homogeneous, homogeneous mixture. Uh, next one, orange juice or pulp. This this one should be a pretty easy one if you just think about it, if you had a glass of orange juice or pulp on the bottom. This is for sure going to be a compound because you have water in there, you have orange, um, but there's, there's, diff there's different uh, sections. You can see the pulp on the bottom and then the juice on the top. So this is going to be a heterogeneous mixture just because it uh, has pretty distinct parts. Chlorine gas, this is just CO2 gas. And it's just an element because uh, this is made up of a single type of element. And then last one, dirt. Dirt, that is going to be a heterogeneous mixture. And again, this one is a little arguable. You can argue that if we were to go and pick up two handfuls of dirt, uh, perhaps I might have some, some rocks or some wood chips in mine. And then if you were to grab some, you might see some some worms or some clumps of, of dirt. So you can argue that this looks, they have distinct parts, uh, so we can argue that it is a heterogeneous mixture. But on the other hand, you can also argue it's a homogeneous mixture, just depending on your dirt sample. So a lot of these mixtures you can see, you can argue it's both homogeneous, either homogeneous or heterogeneous. And there you have it, that's how you would determine the type of matters um, I, I just think that using this table is really helpful in understanding what the difference is between an element, a compound, homogeneous mixture, and heterogeneous mixture is. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.